Please leave a message after the tone. You've got seven questions, do you? Your life is going down the tubes. What do you do when you need advice? Greg, it's good. Good night. What am I fighting for? So turn your advice. Pick up the phone and leave a message for the newcomer. After dark. Welcome to another episode of Nude Clan After Dark During the Brew. I am your host, Caleb. Also Caleb. And Cameron. I thought that was the sound of uh, Caleb's bowels, though. No, dude. <laughs> oh, man, I love it when we're just like, we need the 10 seconds of silence, and then all of a sudden just the fucking coffee gargle goes off. <laughs> yeah. Coffee gargle. Sounds it's, like what I do every morning. Yeah, and gargle that coffee. It's good. It's good, and it's producing something very wonderful. But let's see what we have lined up for today. It looks like we have at least a couple of voicemails, so let's mm-hmm. kick it off. You have a so, Craig, oh, you're the only one who took Chinese. She speaks too fast for me to catch anything. How how much how many uh, years of Chinese did you take? Uh, two. Yeah. How? Okay. Was she asking for the happy ending or not? Because that's she would no. I don't think oh, she okay. was. That's about the only thing in Chinese that I recognize. When I hear that, my ears perk up and I, I just bob the head. <laughs> <you know. laughs> I don't know. That that's this is the price we pay for not checking the voicemails before we do the podcast. <laughs> Hopefully we can uh get that translated. I mean Yeah, if you speak if you speak Chinese, tweet us and tell us what that lady was saying, or that robot most likely. Or well, probably recording. It was it were pre recording, yeah. <sighs> Let's see what else we have. Uh poop sniffer here. I am new to the hog. I'm just uh, dealing with some serious bullshit right now, and I was just <laughs> wondering like right up your alley. what is something that you have had to deal with in your life that just has made you feel completely powerless. <laughs> I know Schweiss likes the dark shit, so get as dark as you feel. Thanks, guys. I did just eat a dark chocolate Kit Kat bar, so I do <laughs> enjoy the dark shit. I don't know if I enjoy the dark shit as much as you, Mr. Poop Sniffer. I was, but... I was wondering where you were going to go with that <laughs> statement. And honestly, I'll tell you, man, when I when I take a shit after drinking a lot of beer, oh, dude, that is like the blackest of the black. <laughs> like, it's... I don't know if you guys get that, but it is horrid. Like, after oh, man. After a few pints of Guinness. Yeah, it's like... It, not only is it, it is it so dark that it blots out all light, it, like, it's just... It feels dark. It sounds dark. It... So your shits are basically black holes. They're absorbing Kinda. light and everything. Yeah, it's like the it's like that black that they're trying to they're trying to create. I, I think it was the like NASA or Fanta something. Fanta black. Or yeah, whatever. like the the blackest black that there has ever been. Um, the sight of Wesley Snipes, of course. <laughs> 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 Love the snipes, uh, but no, really though. Like it's, uh, yeah, that's that's how it is after a lot of beer, and it's horrible. Like it's almost worse than the hangover. I like dread the shit. <laughs> um, what something that but left anyway, us yeah, powerless? That left though. you feeling powerless. Wesley Snipes aside, uh, yeah, I would feel powerless next to Wesley Snipes, especially in that Resident Evil movie. Although he did turn into a is it a Resident Evil movie? Yeah, I think it's like the third or fourth one, the one in the desert. I'm pretty sure that's. I'm pretty sure it's Wesley mm. Snipes. It Should might be the sure Allstate not- guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Yeah, every black guy is the Allstate guy, apparently. but really, it's going to turn out to be Morgan Freeman in a fucking Resident Evil movie. <laughs> I mean, there's always that feeling after you've had way too much hot sauce, or just you know, 
<laughs> one too many peppers and that powerless feeling as you as your butthole clinches and it's time to go urgently. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do. You know you just gotta dump ass and it's gonna burn like hell. And it's just a powerless feeling. Yeah. Do you and not then, live for the burn though? And then you're just stuck in the bathroom. Because like I feel like there were same reason as it feels like your bowels. I mean, there are can be up. a satisfying burn. I feel like the the burn. The I burn f- is good in the mouth. Let's just say that. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like the burn <laughs> in the, the asshole is not like on the brown ring. It's similar to like the burn when you work out. You know, it, to me, it's like I think that's why I worked <laughs> it's, out uh, it's and the ate si- hot peppers. It's the sign of a good meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that burn. You and know? then you just hear, you know, me in the stall, uh, the just inflamed going. asshole. Just and as <laughs> as it's coming out burning, you just hear me in the stall going. And it burns, 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 burning ring of fire. <laughs> and every every so often it intersperses a flame <laughs> 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 reaching never higher. <laughs> <laughs> and it burns, 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 uh, the ring of fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, but an actual powerless feeling. <sighs> I don't know. I... I don't know if I've felt that way for a while. I mean, maybe maybe the last time I got pissed on by my by my son was, <laughs> was powerless cuz like it was a it was He has screaming. all the power. Yeah, and that in that in that position he had all the power. It was better though cuz there was one time I was like wiping his butt and I like pulled it up in the air and he pissed over his head. It was pretty fucking impressive. Like, there was just a stream of piss going into my pillow. I felt pretty powerless then, because it's like, what do I do? Like, cup his, <laughs> cup his dick and pit, let him piss all over my hand, or do I just let him piss on my pillow instead? I think he's trying to get a little something more kind of life-changing from you. Something uh, a little more dark, where you are I, powerless. I don't know. I mean, I, I always have that safety word. So Where safety words have no hold. Yeah. There is no safety word. There is no word for no more in Death Rock. Did one of you <laughs> dump ass when I let, came back? I, it kind of smells like it now, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. God, Craig. Did you dump ass, Craig? No, I did not. No, it's your coffee. His coffee brand, smells what, like <clears throat> ass. What brand of coffee did you buy, Schweiss? Oh, God, Craig. It's definitely coming from you, Craig. It's, it's not me. It's, it's, it's okay. It's your fucking coffee. You walked by him a little too fast. Go a little slower oh, no, next no. time. I know what it is. I opened your fucking fridge for a second. Oh, Looking there must cream. be something dead. What do you have in your fridge oh. that's creating the ass smell? That is bad. That smells like Craig's ass. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> powerless to the stench. First of all. <laughs> yeah, c- perfect for the question. <laughs> powerless to the stench oh, of this. Oh, man. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Do you guys do you guys know of any situations where you were truly powerless? I mean, nothing I can mention on the podcast. Same. What? What? What are you guys talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, well, the thing you won't mention anymore. No, that you totally not that. have mentioned numerous times. No, no, not that. Completely it's not pa- vanilla spice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't. I mean, just if you just think a little bit harder, you could probably come to turn. You know, remember the things that haunt Craig. What the lesbian? No, come on. It's like you, the Midas touch. Are you the, seriously you're like the the? There's like a giant black hole that you're like looking at, and you're like, and then you're like talking about everything around it. I mean, if it's the <laughs> but you thing, should probably you should probably stop. Uh, yeah, thinking about alluding it. to it before I say it. Yeah, not that we can't edit. Right, but, but have won't. we ever edited? <laughs> no, not really. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's just easier not to. It's not that it, it's not hard to edit either. It's pretty fucking easy. It's like really easy. There's a tool in there that I could just snip out a chunk and then just delete it. and It's gone forever. Just yeah, gone. But we've never done that. No, I have used it, but not on this podcast because <laughs> there's no need. It's all pure. This is this is this unadulterated. Is the, yeah, this is the purest podcast. Yeah, Ever. editing is for fucking quitters and for losers. All right, I said it there. I felt powerless when I when I when tried you had to, to edit, edit the yeah. other the other podcast. When I had to edit Ultima, and then I felt so empowered when I got on the nude and I was like, no editing, just leave the dead air, just ease. It's beautiful. Dead air is just a break. That's all. Yeah, 
No, yeah, there's things in childhood that have happened that makes one feel powerless, but yeah. <sighs> I mean, I guess, I don't know. I didn't really, I don't remember anything. Well, you mm-hmm. fortunate soul. Yeah, I guess I was the only one that wasn't raped here or something. I don't know. I know it's not that, but <laughs> it's just, it's horrible Christ. decisions made by our parents that we couldn't really do anything about. But mine were less horrible than Cameron's for sure. I didn't have a, an abusive stepdad. I just had a stepdad that like didn't care about me and used me for manual labor, which I actually appreciated. I know. I, I like the manual labor part. Yeah, I, I, it's beautiful. All parents do that. To be outside digging post holes as a fucking eight-year-old, nine-year-old kid. Super yeah, calloused yeah, I, hands. I, I did like, the same thing. Post holes, uh, digging trenches for... Uh, sprinkler systems. Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah. had to go work on my uncle's farm a couple times. That's cool. Yeah, hard work makes a kid. We have less. And then we, the government we need more hard the work farm in, this, in this world to preserve some form of fish that only lives in that fucking little pond that's on his land. Let it die. I know it's fucking bullshit. It's something that was there was only like. A few of them left, and like we have to take this because we have to preserve this fucking tiny ass fish that no one can even eat. You should have at least gotten to rename the fish. No, the cubbies, the little it's not like little they discovered. It's not like they discovered <laughs> the fish. It's just that's they, true. Yeah, they found out. Hey, the fish also lives here. That would be part of my whatever. disclaimer to sell it, though. I'd be like, how about? I sell it for half, but you let me name the fish. I would have been, I would have been, no, nah, I guess you wouldn't have gotten a good price for your farm that way. I would have been, hey, I'd sell you the land that the fish are on, and uh, if you pay me top dollar for the land. I would have tried that, but I know that wouldn't have. Yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't give them as much as it was worth. That's for no. sure. Of course they wouldn't. When it comes to like, con- conservation efforts and stuff like that, they work with the funds that they have, and they're never going to give anyone top dollar for their land. Yeah, what, what the good thing to do is buy near a school. Like a university, and then you can sell to whatever you want because it becomes such a valuable chunk of land that they're like, "Yeah, dude, we'll buy." Yeah, but how do you know whether or not a university is going to explode? That's true. I mean, like actually way explode, back in the day, like or like, <laughs> 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 you, you never know. <laughs> you got to make some threats first. <laughs> you know, those universities are, have been known to spontaneously explode <laughs> from time to time. That's why they have to have <laughs> off-site campuses for a couple of divisions no, so they just, don't lose uh, the whole thing. Way back in the day, if you had land close to UVU, then that would have been quite a good sell to uh, to that school back when it was not a university, but it was, uh, uh, State Rick's College. College or something like that, whatever yeah. it was called. UVSC. And then it turned into a huge university. It's going to rival the U for in size here in the next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, it's already bigger than BYU, but BYU of is kind so. of a exclusive. BYU is a, it's a private school, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, their grounds are way awesome, though. BYU's shit, man. Of course, it's like half the fucking city It's like city half now. the city, yeah. They just bought Provo High. Like, it was like for almost nothing, I'm pretty sure. Do they buy Provo High? Yeah. Are they making it a, a religious high school? No, no, God, no. They didn't buy the high school. BYU they, they bought the code. building. <laughs> <laughs> BYU Light, yeah. <laughs> now with fewer calories. oh shit no uh gotta honor code them when they're young that's right yeah um i don't know i mean anytime you're i mean ah, shit i i kind of felt i guess i felt slightly powerless when i forgot that i had a ticket and then i paid it and it was 70 dollars more than it was before because then I was like, See, what do you do? A, a real powerless situation is you should just not pay the ticket, had a warrant out, and then got collected on the warrant. Yeah, and then like I didn't have my card on me, so I couldn't yeah. pay it. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck, I forgot my wallet, guys. And they're like, <laughs> too bad. It's Take a weekend. <laughs> you're going to be in jail for three days. Hey, that's a good question. If you're in jail, who do you call first to bill you? Uh, I would call Alex. I mean, my grandparents are all dead now, so... Can't do a that. Good, good choice. I mean, yeah, that's a good. My choice. dad barely knows how to use his fucking phone, so I can't call him. My mom, maybe, but I'd probably call Alex. I, that's the only phone number I have memorized, other than the bread stores and my grandparents. 
<laughs> which is your stick the bread stores. Which sounds bizarre, but they're the last two digits are opposite of each other. It's two one four five instead of two one five four. It was such a fucking mind fuck when I realized that. I was like, what the fuck? Especially when someone called asking for the Schweisses because they botched it when they typed it in. And I'm like, well, I'm one of them, but I'm oddly at my place of work right now. <laughs> and I can't get the one you want on the phone. Go switch the last two numbers. That would have been again. a mind fuck. Them actually trying to call your grandparents and just calling you at work just because it was a number mix up. Yeah, it was. It was insane. I was just like, this is so fucking weird. And I kind of hoped that was going to happen. You know, I was like, oh my God, it's so close. Like, you never know. And then it did. <sighs> so uh, you've been in control your whole life. I don't know. I, I guess no, nothing out of outside of your realm of influence that you could take. I mean, control of I, to make me powerless. Hmm. I don't know, man. Whenever I feel like I'm getting powerless, I just. Just break out the I take the power back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I bring out the Wii Sports, and that's how I take the power back. You get that pro score. Pro, yeah, pro status and the bowling. And yeah, you get pro bowling, and then you work on the tennis a little, the baseball a little, and the golf a little, because those take a little bit longer. Yeah. Anything else you want to do? Oh, baseball is, uh, is also really easy. Yeah, you just need to make tall me's. Yeah. And then you could home run that's all fucking day long. the most broken thing ever. What? Yeah, so if, yeah, if you are... make a tall me in the fucking Wii Sports for uh, the baseball section, you like can always hit a home run, and then they like run across the thing really fast. <laughs> it's yeah, fucking it's, bullshit. It's cheap. <laughs> it's fucking cheap. And just these long boys just flexing on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't. I don't know of any examples, and you guys won't give any examples. So, I mean, I guess just well, being I mean, other than the really big examples that are pretty. Uh, Personal? Are they more personal not... than two episodes ago? I mean, it's less just not than... information that needs to be spread. Less yet That's more. Correct. I don't know. I guess like, I guess just shitty, shitty parenting at times. You know, like being powerless and just being moved across the country all the time. Although I don't, I didn't really care. You know, like I moved a ton when I was a kid. It was like all the time. I I came. I moved from Utah when I was like two years old, two or three, so I don't remember. Well, no, I do remember some of Utah, and I think I was like three, maybe four. And I remember, I remember my mom and my stepdad getting married because I ate. A t- they had like a three-layer cake, and I ate a big-ass piece of cake, and that's all I remember. That and my <laughs> stepdad looked like an idiot in his fucking white tux. It's fucking most '90s nonsense I've ever seen. And then I moved to Florida, and then we moved, like, everywhere, man. It was, like, Delaware, Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama. Yes, I moved to Utah from Oregon, moved up and down the valley, moved to Carolinas, and then moved back. That's a hell of a move, man. That's yeah. a long... Yeah, I don't remember the Carolinas very much. I do. But I remember Georgia. It was very nice compared to here. I remember going to school and. South Carolina. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was an experience for sure, especially for a kid used to West Coast style schooling, then going to East Coast style schooling. A very abrupt change. Yeah. Yeah, there was a kid that got like hit with the ruler a few times in Florida. <laughs> and that's Florida, though. That's probably why they can't count, because when they start counting the ballots, they remember all the fucking trauma their teachers put them through. And then they space <laughs> it, and then suddenly, suddenly the guy that was losing is the guy that won. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they 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 declined the recount, and they're like, "No, no, no, fuck it. This is how it is. We blocked it. Bush wins." You know, and then wow. that same lady, the same county dude, last time fucked up again. I'm like, how is this person? How does this person have a job doing this thing? If you, you literally count, if you can't count, then you shouldn't be there. Like what the fuck. Yeah. Um, I guess I was powerless against that Asian chick in uh, when I was a young child because we had that accelerated reading program. Yeah, I've mentioned that before, <laughs> and it's you read a book and then you take a test on the book that like tests your comprehension and like what you got from the story, and then I it gave they gave me points 
And like I, you guys know how I am with points. Like that was like the OG point thing. I was like, oh my god, I could buy things with these points from reading these books. Yeah, I and remember then it was doing economy class. In it, yeah, school. yeah. We we actually made it in class economy to go buy stuff, and it's like oh, there are <laughs> there is fake dollars to be fools. had. Let me go and get them all. <laughs> yeah, centralize all the wealth with me. Yeah, you know, that's right. Start like a little business. And uh, I I got dude. It was like it was crazy. I would check out like one to two books a day, and I would just go home and read them, and then take the test the next day. Like I got so many fucking points, and they had this. Uh, they had this leaderboard in the the library, and it would be like they our school mascot was the orca, the killer whale, you know. Yeah. And uh, they would just have our name up on this orca on the wall, and I was like always slightly behind this other girl, this like Asian girl that I would see leaving the library, and I was always like, "You, you fuck! I'm like, why are you so much better than me?" You know. And then I started like we, we I started like tripling down on these books, and then I came to school the next day, and like it was like. A jumble of fucking orcas at the back of the line, right? And then, like, a huge, like, 10-foot gap, and then there was me, and then, like, another 10-foot gap, and then it was her, and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ! How many fucking books do you read? <laughs> and I felt pretty powerless, because I was reading my ass off. Like, I would do nothing else. What did, I would what just did you go have to home. prove that you read what you read? Oh, that was the test. You would take okay. the accelerated reader test. Okay, good. And you would it would you would get points based off of how well you did, and like if you passed you, it, you would get them. Oh, so would you get all the points if you passed the test? Even if you got a few questions wrong? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it was like a certain amount. Like a points, books were worth like X amount of points based on their length and difficulty, and then you would get the points if you got a certain amount of percentage. I think. Or you would get a percentage of the points. How big were the books you were reading? Um, I read the Harry Potter books. Those aren't really that big. They were pretty big when I was like eight and nine. When I it was like a couple that of that reminds me how uh, Craig passed ninth grade English. Fuck yeah, dude! Oh, the extra credit for the pages read. Yeah, yeah the, dude, that's the, the, OP. the horse. The horse. I didn't pages. have to do anything in that class. I fucking turned in like a couple from just reading the Wheel of Time, and it's like. Yeah. All right. Well, I have like a million points now. <laughs> I, they would they would always ask me, "Are you oh, sure you read that many the, pages?" Gaming the system. Yeah, uh, they were like, "Are you sure you read that many pages?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fucking sure. I'm trying to beat oh, this." My Asian teacher bitch. knew I was reading it because I was reading it in class. <laughs> yeah. You're like, "Hang on, I got to do this extra credit so I passed your class." <laughs> uh, the, oh yeah, that was that was fucking stupid, overpowered. And then when I passed math in uh, in like fifth grade, I think or sixth, yeah, it was fifth grade um, here. I was already really good at math, and then they would just give extra credit multiplication sheets, and I would go to daycare every morning with my little siblings, like right before I went to school, and I would just do like 20 of those every day. So for me in math, I could always do the math, but I just always took for fucking ever to do the homework because I hated doing it. And so I'd always just go to the catch-up classes to do the homework in class and end up having like a D because I never turned the homework to then jumping back up to an A because I turned it all in at once because then fucking... You know, elementary school, they just didn't care when you tried yeah. as long as you did. And so I would just sit there and then do it all in one go and then jump my grade up right before the <laughs> fucking semester ends. So, you know, yeah, that's how I would do math. Yeah, I, I think I had like 140% in my math class God. or something sick because I just did them for fun, which is disgusting sounding. I was just that like, yeah, like when Craig and I got into the extra credit Sudoku for fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I did Sudoku? in that class, too. Yeah, yeah. dude. What the, the fuck class is that? It was math. Yeah, it was what? math. They yeah. gave us extra what points for doing Sudoku, and I just did, like, hundreds oh my God. of Sudoku That's so like bull- in class. That's so fucking bullshit. That's a fun game, though. That's a great game. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. they would do, like, still play easy it. ones. If you yeah. do, like, expert Sudoku, that, that'll yeah. fuck you over, dude. You gotta, like, pencil in the corners and shit. It becomes a fucking thing. It's a puzzle. It's, it's fucking, a f- it's fun stuff. And the phone ones are such assholes, because sometimes they'll have the wrong button selected, and I'll throw it down, and it's like, Ugh, one of three mistakes, don't fuck up again. Uh, I found a good one, I'll, I'll uh, show it to you. Yeah, um, there was that, and then I was not power. I was powerless against the Asian woman, though. <laughs> that was pretty rough. And then, like, I don't know, just, just shitty things with the, I guess with the stepdad. Like, telling me he didn't want to be my dad, and that was kind of fucked up. <laughs> 
That was dark. He came to me with a tear in his eye and said he wanted to be my dad. And I didn't. Oh, okay. That, yeah, okay. I heard, I heard my that. mom I made my headphones on. My mom made him tell me that he didn't want to be my dad. And I don't know why, but I was like 11, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, what is wrong with you? Why would you say that? Oh, I don't even think I was 11. I think I was like I was like six or seven, dude, because I, I, I was out here when I was that old. That's fucked up, though. And then I lived with him for a while after that. It's like, pff, fuck you then. That's kind of dark. But I don't know. That's not really that big of a deal because the guy forgets to swallow his spit sometimes. So I'm like, <laughs> what? I mean, kind of. It's kind of a win-win for me. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day. Um. Yeah, I, I could know. I could say some stuff, but I don't know if I want that on the podcast. Yeah, I know how you feel. I mean, and also with the grandparents, like both of them dying. I should just wait and write an anonymous uh, autobiography and then publish that. See how well that sells. Yeah. <laughs> But like the you know tales of a mystery man. <laughs> my my grandpa had like a big big fatherly figure in my life when he was dying of cancer. I uh I I would visit him, you know, as he was the thing was is he was in the hospital suddenly and like they made a big deal out of it and I was like, Oh, he's probably fine, like he probably just had like heat exhaustion or oh, something. Oh, you just reminded me of one that I feel like I think I can share, but go ahead and and I, I went to the hospital. I brought, like, my cribbage board because I was like, yeah, this is going to be some bullshit hospital visit. Like, he's fine. They're just – everyone's just kind of freaking out. Like, it's not going to be a big deal. And I go there, and he's fucking hooked up to all these machines. He's super sick, super skinny. And I'm like, what the hell happened to this guy? And then it's like, oh, yeah, he's got, like, stage four uh, – I think it was the lung cancer one. I can't remember what it was. But, like, it was because of the asbestos that he was exposed to when he was in the fucking Navy – so thanks for that, fucking maybe. Yeah, uh, and like it—it it was that one of those situations where my, I was like, uh, "Grandpa, when he died, got a navy payout too." I don't think he did. I don't think my grandpa your, did. Your grandpa did get navy payout. I don't think so. <laughs> it was too long ago. But like, I go and I—I I was just like, "Yeah, this is gonna be nothing." And then I go and it's like this huge thing, and I'm just like floored. I'm like, "Shit, dude, this is this is bad," you know. And then I. I try to make time to visit, but, like, I'm not very family, a very big family man. I have so many things I'm doing with my life, like, with these podcasts and stuff like that and, like, my own little family that I have no time to do uh, anything else. And so I'd go visit him, and I'd he'd be, like, in a ton of pain, and I'd be like, well, I'm going to let you sleep, you know, like, I'll come see you the next, I'll come see you again soon. And then you always run into the time where you say that, and then they die, you know. And that's that's kind of a... I don't know, that that kind of fits this, where it's like yeah. you're powerless because you, you wanted to see him. And I was there the night before, and I left because I was like, you know, you seem pretty tired. Like, I'm going to take off, you know. And it was part of it was him being tired. Part of it was me being like, well, this is kind of boring, and I've got shit i got to do, so let's just go. And then and then it's kind of too late after that, you know. There's no going back. It's He's just dead. And you're you're powerless to that because you – Knew you could have stayed, but you didn't know that he was going to die until he was after he died. So there's no take backsies with that. Yeah. And same thing with my grandma, because my grandma went into the hospital the day my son was born because she went into cardiac arrest and she uh, was like super fucked up. And I went and visited her and it was cool. And she was like starting to recover. And then her heart like freaked out again and they had to restart it. And like they were going to do all these things. And then. I brought, uh, when Nicholas was, the boy and the wife were discharged from the hospital, I, like, brought him by, and she was able to see the baby. Um, then I was like, you know, I'll bring him by in a couple of days when you're feeling better, when you're, because she had, like, the breathing mask on and shit. And I was like, when you can actually sit up and, like, hold him, and that way you can hold your great-grandson, you know. And then she fucking dies before I was able to do that. And it was kind of a mix of me being like, well, I could take her to the ho- take him to the hospital and she could hold him. But I was kind of like, well, I think it'd be better if we waited until she was a little stronger, you know, and could come here. Because she'll come here on her way home because it's on the way, you know. And boom, just dead. Just goes into, uh, has another heart attack and she has a DNR. So they didn't resuscitate. They did, they resuscitated her the first time, which was bullshit. And it kind of against the code, you know. But, right. I don't know but, the implications of that, but. But the second time, they she just died. And so, like, that's another thing. It's like now 
now that'll never happen, you know? You know, yeah, you never think it'll happen until it fucking does. Yeah, and then it's too late. It's not like a, you know, like, oh, my tire blew out and I, I, I wrecked and I have to get a new bumper or a new fender or something. It's, no, this person's dead forever. And now there's no holding the great-grandson, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was convenient, though, I'll tell you that, like having her in the hospital at the same time as the baby. I was like, man, let's just fucking go up a couple floors here and just sit. Let's, let's get it all done one trip. <laughs> yeah, get it all done in one go. Like, I'm, if I, I'm nothing if I'm not a one-trip man, you know? <laughs> That's what I call efficiency. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I call efficiency. Oh, God damn. Uh, uh, no, one but, fell swoop. Uh, your story, though, reminded me of you know one that's a little more recent. I feel like it's okay to share. Um, so back around, I think it was like 2013, 2014, I was just starting to get into school and taking classes and whatnot and then that was when found out my mom had breast cancer um Mm -hmm. and going through all of it uh she had to get a double mastectomy and let me tell you she during this whole whole process of you know finding cancer and then doing the chemo and then doing the double mastectomy it's just like progressively she just you know she was just getting worse like you know physically worse but then also um, uh, just her her mind stuff. She was just getting really depressed, of course, and then just dark uh, inside her head as well. Um, and then it was fucking terrible for school too, because I legitimately was the only one there who could take care of her, who only the only one who had time to take care of her. Um. And so I would often have to leave work early to go take her to appointments or um, or I'd be staying with her at the hospital overnight and stuff like that. I had one coworker get mad because uh, that coworker had helped me get the job. And like, well, you just can't keep taking time off for cancer and stuff. I got so mad at that, like shaking mad. And then when I go talk to the manager about that and all that was cleared up. But me and that coworker are good now. So, But this story is... Um, <laughs> Cut to camera dragging a fucking tarp with a body. <laughs> like, we're good now, though. It's fine. <laughs> um, then, then the night where she had to go uh, for this double mastectomy surgery. Is that when they take him out? Is that? No. So double. Uh, so mastectomy is when they remove the breast altogether because oh, okay, so they, they have to remove both. the cancer. So okay. double mastectomy means they have to take off both. Yes. Okay. And so her being under for that, and I was there the whole time, that procedure was a long time. She was under, and then as she was coming to, all she as she was just crying and just, you know, she just kept saying that she just wanted to die. And I was just sitting there at the side of her bed, just, you know, what can you say? Like, you, what can you say, you know, besides just what would feel empty at that moment to that person? Yeah. Um, I mean, little it- did she know at that point that, you know, life is still crazy because, uh, you know, can't ever predict anything, but she's much better now. She's much happier now. Like I know, I know you guys knew my mom during that process. And then shortly afterwards, how she was kind of manipulative, kind of crazy. Yeah. I knew her before too. Yeah. But she's still a little of that, but much better now than she was then. Like it's nine day. How how much better it is right now. But what it's at that moment you just you feel powerless because there's literally nothing you can do sitting down with her as she's going through that. Yeah, just I mean, besides offering your presence and your support in that in that way. Yeah, um, just about the only thing you could say is like, I mean, you probably should have thought of that before they cut your kids off. Like, <laughs> if you're gonna think about just not doing it, like before that. But you, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, how, you have to. I mean, it's it's what they yeah, said. No, and yeah, then, well, she didn't want to make plastic, it. Like, and then plastic surgery afterwards. I mean, it's not real anymore, but yeah, they can but, make them near real. Um, and then her quality of life is. But she didn't yeah. know that then. No, you know, when you're in the moment, it, you don't know that then. And so she was just, you know, it's just you just a powerless a powerless moment, a true powerless moment where there's nothing you can do. Um, the cancer process is t- extremely tiresome to the patient, but then it's hard to have to rely on other people because they have their own lives going on at the same time. And I was literally the only person who could be there day to day. And then later another family member had tried to lend a hand and that 
ended out not turning out good. So poor relationship with family on that one front. And then, you know, people who who turn their back and kind of walk away from a situation like that, you just, it's kind of hard to have the desire to reach out and then have them part of your life again, just because, you know, at at any moment that, you know, what if it got too hard for them, they're just going to turn their back and walk away again. So a couple of family members there that's hard to, you know, get back to old family status. Yeah. Um, and then I was also dating a girl at that point too. And I was spending so much time with my mom and going through stuff with her that there was even one point where she had a phone call where she was super mad that I was like, I could not like spare any time for her at that point. And it got to her. She's like, well, it just sounds like your mom really needs you right now. So maybe we should just rethink us until things get better. And I'm like, if that's what you, this, that's, if that's what you fucking think, then yeah, then I'm a hundred percent ready to, to just call it off right now. Yeah. until Things get better. <laughs> <laughs> and I, oh man, shaking mad again. And then she called back and apologized later. And I'm like, you know, you just, yeah. Yeah, that's another. That's a story for another time. I can't imagine somebody telling me that shit. Oh man, and be like, yeah, don't ridiculous. make me break out the fucking Wii Sports because I'll break the <laughs> fucking Wii Sports out right now. I love that fucking game. Right? <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> because she also didn't like my mom either because of the way my mom can be. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I agree with you on most parts, but this is an exception to the rule right now because of what's fucking going on. Yeah, it's a little different. Even if it was yeah. the same beforehand, now it's like, well, and this then is more dealing reasonable. with the psychological after effects. I mean, you know, it took it took some time for her to to get to where she's at right now. And she's doing stuff again. She's singing again, uh, part of a band, and so stuff like that. Yeah, makes her happy. Encourage that one hundred percent. Like, got the tits again life. too. And then not too long ago, about a year ago, they found out the cancer has metastasized. So she does have stage four cancer. And so right now she's on treatments to keep it at bay until that treatment doesn't work anymore. So it's just like it's a race against, you know, how long something can stay effective until it's no longer effective and switching it to something else. Basically, you're just trying to slow down the growth as long as possible. Yeah. Um, And it can be a while. It, you it, just yeah. got to keep it in check. It can't be a while. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, It hasn't grown too much anymore. How, how old is your mom? Of, like she's 50, 50? Um, 50. She probably doesn't want this. No, no. But I haven't seen her. In her 50s. To, yeah, she's mm, past mid 50s. Oh, okay. So. See, that's not. Uh, I, I, that's that's too young, man. That's that's That would be. I would be at my half life right now. If, <laughs> yeah. I'm not ready to be 50% of the way, so I can imagine that's pretty crazy. You know, and that's the, now at stage four, like, yeah. let alone when it started years ago. And then grandma died of, so she had, my grandma had cancer, but she didn't die from the cancer. She died of liver complications from the medication afterwards in mm. her 60s. Yeah. Um, that's a little, a little more. But we, we've advanced a ton since then medication wise. So I don't yeah. see that being an issue. Yeah. Though. I love how both of my grandparents had like Parkinson's or like they had like degenerative brain diseases but they didn't die from that and those are the things we have basically not cured but we can stop that now like you can i think we have medication now that stops the growth of of those like degenerative brain diseases so of dementia and, my, and, and I, I, shit like that and it's like pff, i have a i have a living example of that of course you had to get the fucking cancer that, but yeah that, that there's lots of stuff happening in that, that stuff is crazy yeah. But uh, having to tell having to tell somebody like seven times that you're not going to college anymore in like one sitting is something else. I'll tell you what. I I feel so <laughs> like, bad for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you still going to school, Caleb? I don't have to. I don't have to have those conversations anymore. Oh. Of course. <laughs> but it was rough. It's just always like, look on the bright side, right? <laughs> over yeah. and over. Yeah, that's how you have to live life. You got to make but, a joke of it. And, yeah. And live positive. And so I guess that's that's the the one moment of of darkness and powerlessness that I can share because this one actually has a better ending so far. It's yeah. it's progressed into something that's that's much better. Quality of life is going up. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I mean, I feel like when you know you're on a time a timer, I, you well, try it's not to necessarily. Live. It's it's like when you when you're getting that old. I mean expecting 20 25 30 plus years of life is 
kind of where you're at already. That's true, yeah. Um, and yeah, like, just making sure you get those years of life and it, you know, is kind of the, you know, where you're at. Yeah. Um, I, I just hope they make it, they, they make the ability to be, to not die before we die. Like, I, I don't really want to go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to, I want to see how this fucking plays out. Everything we did, uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, we did a fundraiser that was like semi successful, but yeah, just treatments are going on. Oh, yeah, I saw good. that. Yeah, 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 you know, it's expensive shit, man, yeah. that's for sure. And it's unfortunate I just have to try to keep getting her crazy ideas of her going down to Mexico and doing whatever treatments they have down there. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, they're gonna wake M- up with maybe, like, maybe not with some, <laughs> some parts missing, but uh. And then there's also the thing I might have to take at some point or another. I'm probably going to have to take financial control at some point. Yeah. Get the... uh, Sometime uh, in the future. I was so... Power of attorney kind of a thing. Again. Yeah, power of attorney. Just because she keeps losing her money to scams that look like a scam from a mile off. I know. No matter how much you say, you're going to lose your money and I'm just going to let you deal with it. I'm not going to give you anything because how else are you going to learn that you're just, you're just losing your money right now. And then she's, Oh no, but this one's for sure. I'm like, no, this is a hundred percent a scam. Like I'm, I'm calling a lawyer right now to take away your, your financial privileges. <laughs> um, and she lost the money. And what did I do? I didn't give her anything. She had a scrounge for a couple months until her next paycheck kicked in because I wanted it to hurt a little bit. Yeah. Because I that- mean, it sounds weird. But my mom asks money all the time, and I generally, like, I pay for, you know, small bills for her all the time. I help keep her truck going because, you know, it's what I do. And when she loses a whole bunch of her money to another scam, oh, man, it pisses me off so much. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I would have cut that off before, man. You're stronger. You're, you're a stronger your family what, what man can, than what I. Can, what can you do? Literally... Just when your parent is don't call him ever that's that's what you gotta no. do hope you're listening to the podcast mom by the way <laughs> yeah yeah this is hey, when you yeah, there there comes a time where you just need to take a break i think and it's it, it becomes it's hard because they use that against you they use the they can use the oh well i'm your you know i i brought you up i gave birth to you i did this i did that and i'm like yeah so and I, I appreciate I kind of, that um, but I don't appreciate this, and I this is a, why I'm cutting you off. This is how I approach giving money to my mom. If she asks me to co-sign a loan for her, I 100% will not because I don't want her to have that loan. Um, if she asks me for, like, around Christmas time, I just, out of the blue, give her a couple hundred dollars because I know she really needs it, and she wants to feel like she can get people presents. Like, I know a good portion of that money I'm going to give to her for Christmas is going to come back to me anyway in the form of gifts. And it makes her happy to do that. Um like I'll pay for things to keep her car going. So she has reliable transportation. Um, I'll pay for the phone bill, but whenever she asks for a good chunk of money, so like, so she can go blow it on something. hundred percent. Don't, I never do. Yeah. But yeah, kind well, of powerless situation. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah the, we're on one hand. You, it's a little different cause with you, if you cast off the yoke of the mother, you know, she could die. Whereas with me, it's just... I don't think she would ever come to that, but... Well, no, I know, but like with like the... When, when it comes to her being like she needs someone to help take care of her, where does the state look first? Family. Yeah, that's where they should... That's where you should look first. Exactly. You shouldn't look... You shouldn't look to the government to help you. Yeah. You should look to your family, and that's why it is important to have these kind of things and have a, an ability to do that, because that should be your first line. So of I just want her to keep doing things that improve her quality of life, and I hope that she finds someone that she, she – there's people who like my mom, like who want to date her and want to, you know, hopefully eventually marry her, but she's too picky still at this time and age, and I told her, you know what, if they have money, that should play a, a good factor into uh, your choices right now. Joe Joe just needs <laughs> to come back. <laughs> the, the, the night on shi- he, he in Shining He needs to Armor. make a lot more money in order to make that <laughs> Not work. even a lot. Just I mean, It doesn't have to be like, just like, love has to play into it, of course. She needs to enjoy her last, you know, 
few however years. many years. Not, not, not like she's on her deathbed, but like her, she's still young enough that she can really go out and still enjoy and do things. And being married to someone during that, and so they can go off and go do stuff together. That's something I don't want her to miss. I want go her to have tell her. her to go move to California, and then <laughs> Joe. Well, she will thought find about her. it. She can't <laughs> afford to go out. Joe will make her a Joe star. <laughs> yeah, Joe will make her a star. <laughs> Painter, so painter, <laughs> painter like his French girls. I don't know. No, it, she should move somewhere. But though. now she's in again. She's in a band again. She used to do that. Yeah, something like that. And would then be good. Yeah, they just... get to go play out in uh, in Mesquite and Reno, I think. And do see, stuff that's like great. That's a great opportunity you know, exactly. to meet people. I mean, even if it doesn't turn into anything, she's doing something that makes her happy, and that's I want her to do stuff like that. The yeah. more she's happy, the better she gets overall uh, psychologically, and she's not. The way she was before. She gets out of that sunken place yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Well, there you go. That's, I mean, that was kind of dark, but then it got light, so. So suck it, poof sniffer. Suck it. I think <laughs> or just sniff, sniff it. it. <clears throat> yeah, sniff that shit. Um, I think that's it for this week, guys. We are out of voicemails, though. So please call us. Yeah, give us a call. 385-204-3921. That's 385-204-3921. Three nine two one. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of After Dark. Give us a call. Give us your questions. We'll give you advice slash answers. We'll see you next time.